What's happening, everyone? Kira and Ben back again. Uh, this week, we are going to be covering a newer film. came out in 2023. It is called The Sound of Freedom. It was released in theaters. Um, I never watched it in theaters. I did only watch it um, on Amazon Prime this past weekend. So very new for me. But Ben, you actually suggested this film. So tell me your history with it. Uh, I was at work and a guy named Frank had suggested it. He said, have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Well, this is during the time when Bobby and Oppenheimer were big. And I said, no, I never heard of it. He goes, so it's in theaters, but it's about a very controversial subject and uh, you should do it. So I threw it by you. Frank suggested this movie. He really did. (laughs) Oh, I wish I knew that going in. Okay, so yes, this is a movie. Um, there is a lot of controversy surrounding the film during its production, during its making, during its release, during its press run, and now um, that it has hit streaming, it is still uh, shrouded with controversy. Um, we will obviously be talking about everything that we can and talking about the film, and we will leave it up to the viewer's volition if they want to watch it or not. Obviously, with things that we feel passionate about, we will obviously say, but I do think that this movie is very unique. Interesting, to say the least. Definitely not a film I would recommend. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely a very controversial subject and very touchy subject uh, across the world. I mean, it, it deals with children trafficking and, you know, any kind of trafficking is, you know, a very touchy subject, especially like it's just it's just awful. No, absolutely. And um, I, I, as we speak about this, I want to make one thing very clear. Um, ben and I do not support child trafficking. We stand with victims. We understand um, the levity that comes with this and the nuances that come with this because this movie is very much in a box that child trafficking only happens in one way, which um, we know is just incredibly false and i want to make that very clear so everything that we're saying we're relating directly to the film and not to how um child trafficking actually happens because we understand the gra- gravity and levity of this situation so we do not want to minimize anything yeah 100 percent. and critics did rake this over the coals for the fact that it made it like the kids were just being grabbed and snatched off the streets and we all know that that's not like just one case scenario of how things go down Yes, the, uh, the, it, it happens in a lot more sinister ways. It happens, um, this movie uh, focuses on it happening in Central America and um, Mexico and Argentina and Colombia, but obviously we know that it happens all over the world. We see it happening all over the world, and it does happen here in the United States. So I just want to make that very clear that this movie is set in a vacuum of It felt like they did minimal research based off of this guy's tale that, you know, it is a true story. So obviously there are things that happen, but this was also sensationalized for a film, of course, as most biopics are. Yeah. And originally Fox had owned this. And then when Disney bought Fox, they were like, nope, we're not we're not releasing this. And then they actually five years later, they actually sold it back to the filmmaker. They sold it back to the filmmakers and then Angel Studios in Provo, Utah picked it up. And this is, as you would assume, from Provo, Utah, an incredibly religious <laughs> production house. And they decided to distribute the film. Um, one thing that was really interesting, like I had said, I have not seen this film in theaters and we will get we will get to the plot and the story in a bit. Um, but I did not see this film in theaters, but I do from reading about reviews know that at the end of the film, uh, our main lead, uh, John Cassavelli, what's his name? I don't know. Jim Cassavelli. I don't know. Think of a white name. It's him. He um, came onto the screen after presenting a QR code saying child trafficking is real. One way to help it is by funding our movie. So he put a QR code to buy more tickets for the movie to artificially inflate the box office sales. This movie did a hundred million at the box office. That's insane. I did not know that. (laughs) Yeah. So instead of, I don't know, maybe QR coding, I don't know, any organization that actually prevents and adds relief, adds um, investigations into child trafficking, instead of supporting any companies like that, it actually just crowdfunded for its own movie, which I find kind of self-serving and insane. Uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's number is 1-800-843-5678. Thank you. And we want to support and fund companies that are actually doing the work. The organization 
our and I do let me pull up what it stands for um, but the abbreviation is our what that was associated with this film actually it came out that they are more um, they don't really do as much work as they say that they do and it's really just kind of like over exploited hype and that they just try to play on people's emotions instead of like actually doing anything yeah and that that's not what we were all about in any way shape or form we want to actually help people so like the, the number I just gave for National Exploited Children, Kira will give up the information that she's going to pull up. I said the movie, okay, it's a it's a hard watch if you if you watch it, um, not because it's not a good movie. I mean, the movie is uh, I over 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 sensationalized, over sensationalized, sensationalized, sensationalized. It's not as dramatic as like they they make it. Um, like like he actually doesn't quest after Miguel's sister Rico like in the movie. Um, She's actually found 24 hours after Miguel. Uh, he's actually, they, they used the pot of that for a person he did hunt down named Gardy. Very interesting. So, yeah, so they blend the story together. Um, but let's get let's get into the story um, for those of you who have not seen it. Obviously, it follows um, Tim Ballard. He is our Homeland Security agent who is in the is in the sex crimes unit catching pedophiles. So. The movie starts off and we see how um, Miguel and his sister Rocio get trafficked. Um, it is um, they are lured by Miss Cartagena into believing that they could be children, mo- child models. And they are kidnapped from their father, um, put in a cargo ship and shipped to. Um, well, they're from Honduras and then they get shipped to Cartagena. Then it pans to. Our, our protagonist, Tim Ballard, who is staking out a pedophile's house, and we see that he is trying to purchase a child online. He's looking at all these different photos. They kidnap him. We see how good Ballard is at undercover work because he convinces the pedophile that he is also a pedophile to get him to give him to get have him give him up a name of a trafficker, Earl. Um, and then this is how Tim meets. Miguel. Now, through talking to Miguel, he realizes that there are many more. This is the first child he saved. In the movie, it makes it seem like this is the first child he saved because he's mostly just kidnapped pedophiles. Um, And then he um, talking to Miguel, he finds out that his sister is gone and still overseas. So he's like, all right, I'm going to use the discretionary fund and we're going to we're going to rescue all these children. So he goes down uh, to Colombia. He works with a local police detective, and they meet up with a uh, vampire who wasn't actually called Vampire. Yeah, his, uh, in the movie he's called Vampiro, but in real life his, he was called Batman. Batman, okay. And he is an ex-cartel drug runner, and his job is now he has decided that his goal now in life is to purchase trafficked children and put them in safe houses and give them new life. And... Tim is like, okay, let's let's get into business together. Like, we're gonna save all these children. One thing about Vampiro that I mean was unsettling to me, and I will say this movie, I did not find this movie well acted, except for Bill Camp's performance, and he plays Vampiro. Um, I felt like our main was very um, stiff, very like unfeeling. Like, there's like this part where he's like looking at like this like website of like child pornography and he's just like sobbing but he's not really crying it looks like he's just trying to push out tears and i was like come on dude put some heart into it but so uh vampiro this part this monologue of his um really took me out of the film and i understand the religious overtones i mean obviously it was produced by a mormon angel studios like it's gonna have a lot of religious overtones but um when bill camp is telling us um he is telling why how he got into buying children to save them and he's talking to tim about it and he's like you know i i uh, retired from the cartel got my great apartment still living the same life i was living coked out of my mind doing drugs partying whatever and he talks about how as he's walking home he meets a woman who assumes he's 20 is 20 or 25 years old and they um, engage in sexual activity. And then at the end of it, he realizes that she is 14. And I was like, okay, so now we have to root for someone who raped a 14-year-old. And then he's like, and then I was going to kill myself, but God intervened. I don't know, dude. Maybe kill yourself. I don't 
no, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm never, ever, ever supporting anyone to kill themselves. But like in that moment, it's like, okay, so now this is your mission from God. You're God. Like what, what you're, you're a missionary. This is your mission from God. It's, it's a noble mission, but like you still raped a 14 year old and we're supposed to have, you're our protagonist or one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of disturbed me too. Um, you know, he's like, oh, and I, I saw her put on her hello kitty uh, uh, socks and I'm like, like, oh, what the hell? I mean, and listen, I've met many uh, 14-year-old girl, and none of them ever, Look 25. Yeah, none of them look 25. I mean, I don't believe in my heart you couldn't tell. I you mean, know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm around young kids all the time, and I, you can tell the young kids, and then you can be around adults, and you can tell adults. I mean, I don't know. You have to be really high on drugs. Bro. I, don't, I don't get No, it. or you just don't give a shit. And this is the point of the movie. It's like, okay, maybe if he actually, like, I don't know. Like, did you save that girl that you raped? No. You just let her continue being trafficked. You continue to let her be a victim. And now all these extra people that you're saving, you're like, oh, this is my penance. It's like, maybe save the one person. If, like, you're calling yourself the darkness in her eyes. Like, the script is insane, you guys. The script is insane. So, okay. So that's one of our characters. So now, I mean, they create this whole sting operation where they're creating a luxury hotel because he gets this idea because there's one in Bangkok. So he gets this idea to create this luxury hotel for pedophiles. And then this is how they capture up. I think they said they rescued 54 kids in the beach raid. Yes, yes, 54. And they caught 12. 12 traffickers. So obviously this was real. I mean, the the film at the end does show the um, the footage of the real beach raid. So obviously that happened. Obviously it was great that those children were saved. Obviously it was great that those people were kidnapped. Um, it really did look like Miss Cartagena was part of it um, in, in the real footage. Yeah, yeah. And like I love how when the police come in, she's like, I'm a victim. And they're like, yeah, just get on the ground. Okay, but uh, uh, okay, obviously she is not a victim. She is she is part of this but there is something to say about a cycle of abuse we do not know if she is a victim or not yeah this is true this is true so i just i i i don't know her story i did not look into her story i i don't she could be fully evil she could be in a cycle of abuse uh both things could also be true there there's a lot of nuances i think with with crimes like this so yeah so now um he's now the government has cut him loose because Homeland Security is all about the security of the children, but when it costs them too much money, they will cut you loose. And I actually thought that that part was so interesting. Um, when he's talking to him, he's like, you got to keep it under 10 grand. And the guy's like, okay. And then he's like spending all this money. He's like, okay, you have to come home. Like you're spending too much money. Um, and he's like, well, I'm, I'm nowhere in the case. And he's like, okay, well cut, cut your losses. You've saved one child. And he's like, well, that's not enough for me. And then he's like, and then his direct deputy director kind of bargain, tries to bargain with him. He's like, cause he's like, okay, well, I'm going to quit my job. He's ha- has like a one-off conversation with his wife and she's like, you need to do this. Like you need to find these children. He's like, okay, well, and even the real Tim Ballard at the end, like credits his wife to like doing this work that he's done. But then the, like his like department head or chief or whatever is like, hey, you know, like you're 10 months from your pension. Like, are you sure you want to give that all up for some children? It's like, OK, dude, do you like you're the chief of sex crimes and homeland security and you're telling like kind of like you don't give a shit. I don't know. The movie was insane because you can tell that it's very like it's very like funded like, oh, the Illuminati and the left and like all these rich assholes are the ones like these billionaires and celebrities. These are the ones that like traffic children. Yes, obviously we know that there is fringe people that do that. Like we can talk about Jeffrey Epstein if we want, but at the same point, it's like you have to look at how you're framing the government. You can't be pro right, pro government, pro like this is the way to do it. And then literally show the government failing. Like the script is bad. Yeah, it could have been much better. I mean, (laughs) I mean, I don't know what happened. I mean, bringing it to light child trafficking is something that should be done automatically. I think that should be in light. But this script wasn't good. And like it was it felt like very, I don't know, like pushed. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Well, um, the script did go through a rewrite. So um, one of the writers, uh, Mon- Monogrovia or Monteveria. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so bad with pronunciations. Actually rewrote wrote one version of the script based on a story that he had read because he wanted to bring child trafficking to light, 
kind of reworked the story after meeting Ballard and then during the press run actually kind of removed himself completely from the right from the um, thing. He was like, I actually don't like how this movie turned out. I actually don't like the messages of it. It was he there's also a co-writer, Robert Barr, I believe. And um, so the original writer kind of took a full step back and then you see Barr and uh, Cheziel and the real Ballard doing um, most of the press. Um they have said some some real some real things during this press tour. Um, they have talked about a lot of like there's a lot of QAnon conspiracy that uh, surrounds this thing. How like even though the film doesn't touch on it, uh, Kaziel and Barr decided to bring up of their own volition that they believe that child trafficking is also um, organ harvesting for some special organ blood type. I don't know. I was reading it. I was making my brain hurt. I go, do people are people this freaking stupid? But you know, I guess they are. I guess they are. Yeah. Um, I, I think the common thing is, is if, if it's said on the media, it's believable. And like, that's far then that's from not true. true. Far from true. That's not true. I mean, and I, I, and I mean, this is something that people have been trying to bring to light um, for a long time. One thing I do want to talk about um, in regards to this is, did you ever see the show Who is America featuring Sasha Baron Cohen? Uh, no, I have not. Oh, my God. I will plug this show very briefly. Um, I love Sasha Baron Cohen. He's very funny. Um, everyone will know him from doing Borat and Bruno and, I don't know, literally The Dictator, Ali G. Like, he plays all these roles very well. Yeah, I know Borat. But he's actually incredibly intelligent. He does the show Who is America where he'll dress up incognito um, and go to talk to different billionaires and politicians and kind of expose them for the scumbags that they are. And, like... Some of this stuff, like he tried to get a uh, senator in Texas um, or a governor in Texas actually tried to sue him over the show, saying that he was misled because um, Sasha Baron Cohen got him to uh, show how racist he was on air. By, um, but you guys should watch the episode. It's very good. It's called Who is America? One of the episodes, though, that uh, didn't actually never aired and Sasha Baron Cohen came out because he's very passionate about this. An episode that never aired was he was pretending to be a billionaire in vegas and he was speaking to a hotel concierge and in his conversations obviously he was mic'd up he's trying to get this guy to like have like a horrified reaction it is all it is all very reactionary and what you can get people to do and say um so he goes to this um hotel concierge the hotel is never um revealed i'm so sorry you guys if you can do better research than me i implore you the hotel's never revealed, but he's talking to this concierge. Obviously, he's Mike, so you can hear both conversations. And he is saying to him, you know, I'm looking for a, a partner for the night, younger than bar mitzvah, older than eight, like very, like, obviously looking for a child. And instead of having a horrified um, reaction from the concierge, the concierge is like, OK, I can put you in contact with these people. I can do this. I can do that for you. Let me actually help you. And it's like so then Cohen, Sasha Bear Cohen on his own felt so disgusted by the whole thing obviously he didn't pursue it and he actually turned over all the tapes and all the evidence and everything that his film crew had um to the fbi and when he went to follow up with them being like hey like did anything come of this like do you need more from my team what else can we do to help and support you the fbi actually was like it's a closed case like we're actually not pursuing this money talks money talks and this is happening all over the place i mean not children trafficking, but we talked to, um, a few years back. Uh, Robert Croft was Robert Kraft, um, for all you Patriot heads out there, was exposed for going into uh, massage parlors that um, had trafficked um, Asian workers there. And they found out that they were trafficked from Florida all the way up to Vegas through um, cargo ports. And it's something it's something that happens every day, whether you're a child or an adult. Patrick Mahomes brother pushed the girl up against the wall, forced his tongue down her throat. The Mahomes um, fan club made her lose her job by harassing her and recently he got nothing but probation because um they dropped all the charges yeah because money talks and i mean it's 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 really it's really disgusting i can't say it enough i mean look at look at epstein and the epstein list i bet people who don't want their names revealed are the ones that killed him and i do believe that yeah because um let's just face it you know if, if you're gonna talk you're gonna die I if mean, you're gonna talk, you're gonna die. I mean, there's there's people out there that can have you gone. I mean, it's what it is. It is, yeah, it absolutely is. This movie is literally um, crazy. One thing I do want to say um, is that fans of this movie are also crazy. I do believe um, in being, and I'm using quotes, red pilled um, by like 
places like QAnon. Um, one of the writers of the Rolling Stones wrote actually a kind of scathing uh, review of this movie, saying it wasn't good, saying it was boring, saying the plot was um, messy, saying the acting was bad. Just like a general, you know, review of the movie. And fans of the film online um, actually attacked him all weekend and were threatening to expose him as a pedophile and being like, if you don't support this movie, you don't support children. You don't. And he's like, that's absolutely not what I'm saying. I'm there's nothing in my history that would suggest I'm a pedophile. Like, do you not understand the film? You can't just make baseless accusations because you don't agree with what I'm saying. Um, really crazy stuff. The, the, this movie, like I said, it's shrouded in controversy and people audiences love it, though. Yeah, I mean, I think. They love the idea of it because it's it deals with a subject that really should be thrown out. There. Like I said, it should be thrown out there. The movie was not done well, but the concept of what it stands for is something that people would, can get behind. Because let's face it, there's child trafficking everywhere. The, uh, not to throw out things, but sneaker companies have uh, sweat uh, shops with kids in it in other countries. Um, you have clothing places with sweatshops in other countries, and even in America. And it's not touched upon because people are making a lot of money off it. You know, the basketball players, the football players, the governors, the um, the millionaires. So no one touches it. Yeah, no one touches it. No one wants to. No one wants to look behind the curtain. And it's really devastating. And it's really hard. There's a lot of like sadness in the world. And honestly, I believe like if you were going to tell this story, you could have just made it a documentary. Actually, there was a documentary in 2016 that talks about Ballard. Um, I didn't see it. Uh, but there is it. Um, I feel like there are so many companies that you can actually support that like do good. Um, and that's all we're trying to do is raise awareness and do good. Do I, I think this movie did it in not the best way. I think it did it in a very white savior preachy way, which um, it really felt like the police of Argentina really did the heavy lifting. I mean, he lost all his funding from the government convince this like billionaire wannabe like guy to c stay with them i don't know i thought it was really interesting it it's like a right-wing action movie i don't know seeped in religious religiousness yeah and um nine actors did turn down the lead role they they refused to do the lead role they were like nope we don't want nothing to do with it yeah because they were like this is gonna be bad <laughs> and then like the main guy that did it, the only other thing I found that he did that I knew him from was being Jesus in Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ. I did not know that. Yeah, and those movies are like 19 years apart, so I don't know. Maybe he's not a good actor. <laughs> not for 19 years apart. I mean, if that's all you found him, I mean, what do they just, like, go... He might, there's no one else wants this script, and he's like, I'm, He's like, I'm, I'll take it. I'll, I'm lonely. <laughs> he's like, it. I believe QAnon. I, I got this. Ridiculous. Literally ridiculous. Let's see. The movie, though, uh, ends on a positive note, leaving you with hope, because even though he goes into a camp that there's cr clearly many children there, he just saves the one that he was going after. Yeah, the rebel encampment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with Spider. Uh, yeah. Scorpion. Scorpion. Scorpion, yeah. Um, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Like, I was looking at all the children. I'm like, oh, he's going to do something where he frees all these kids. Was waiting for it. Yeah, and just takes the one. Just takes the one. And I literally was like, okay, like... Are you going to send an extraction team back there? Like, did you kill Scorpion or is he just like passed out? Also, how far, like, I don't know, like some of the choices that were made in the movie, I get it's like to be like cinematic, but like, I don't know. You're like, this guy's all, pi all pious about saving children and doing what he can. And he just saves one in a, in a, in a camp where there's clearly more than one. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the heat, I don't know. I mean. I guess it's, you know, pick your poison, I guess. I, I guess. Mean, you know, he, he just figured he could only get one out. But like you said, was there an extraction team sent in to get the rest? I, mean, I hope so. You know, but I also, like, I look at a lot of things that happen in the world. Like, so when I was living in Florida, uh, a little girl went missing and, you know, she was ended up murdered. And uh, it was all over the news. And everybody was, like, freaked out about it and, like, caring and wanting to know about it. And, but there was another girl taken. And she was from a poor family. And, and no one cared. And no one cared. Because that is the hypocrisy of America. I swear to God. It's like, okay, so if you're rich and white and pretty 
you get all this media attention, but if you're poor or a person of color, then it's just normalized. It's just fine. And I think that is so incredibly wrong. It is a really disgusting way that our media works. And like, you'll hear it in crimes all the time. Like you'll see it all the time. And it's really devastating that still in our year 2024, oh my God, it's 2024. The the shit like this is still happening. It's like we actually haven't progressed at all. We're actually exactly where we were. And it's, 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 it's really disheartening to see because for a company, for a company, for a country, that's how big capitalism is in America. I just called it a company in a country that prides itself on liberty and freedom. Um, it is also a country that does not care about more than half of its population. Yeah. Uh, I just found out recently there's, uh, a uh, story called The Overlooked. Have you heard about that? No. Uh, so it's about American Indian women that are being uh, prostituted and killed. And it's on, they're on reservations, so no one cares. Uh, the re- reservation police really don't look into it much. Uh, but there's this one woman that, like, tries her hardest to try and, like, free and rescue these women. But, like, the American government doesn't care because it's not on American land. It's on Native American land. And Native Americans don't care because, well, a lot of people believe that they're getting kickbacks. I'm not saying they are. Don't quote me saying, oh, he said, no, I'm saying what they say is going on. But uh, yeah, they're called the overlooked because like no one cares. about. Them. No one cares about them. Yeah. Well, the American government cared about them when all their land was oil based and now they're just feeding them to the wolves. How, how American, how American. I mean, it is really devastating to me the amount of shit. I mean, the world is a really bleak place right now. I know that we want to have hope in things and I try my hardest to have hope in things, but there's a lot of bleakness. There's a lot of tragedy. There's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of things that, and there's a lot of change that can be done, but no one wants to do the change. Um, And that, and that's, and we can do what we can. And obviously every little bit counts. And as long as you're moving forward and talking about it and making positive changes and make, and trying to be a positive force in the world, then you can stop and then you can do what you can. But, globally on a scale where it matters it's incredibly difficult yeah and in the movie they say that you know child trafficking is a billion dollar industry industry billion dollars billion i mean uh, so that means it's not like only a few people doing this i mean it's to be a billion dollar industry i mean that's saying something that's saying something that's a that's a lot of people that's a lot of butts and seats you know what i mean that's like that's a lot of that's a lot of sadness i mean there is a lot of sadness in the world and this is something that's really sad and if i i don't know it feels it feels frivolous to just be like let's go and protect every child because of course that's what you want and of course that's the goal but obviously there's a a lot more bad in the world than there is good and maybe that's cynic maybe that's cynical of me but yeah there's um a part in the movie where they quote the bible and it says if someone hurts these young kids they should have their you know a, a stone tied around their neck and thrown to the ocean to die you know, and, you know, you think about it. I mean, crimes against children are the most heinous. And I will yeah. say, I will say, like, obviously, like, there's different, there's a different degree to every crime. But I think if you commit any crime against a child, you deserve to die. Full you're stop. St- you're still innocent because children are innocent. Children are very innocent, very naive, very loving, very caring. And, and then and you take them. From them. Yeah. And to, yeah, full stop. If you hurt a child, you're, you're evil and you deserve to die because no child deserves that no child i mean i don't know i don't know i i feel like if you're if you're sitting in a place just talking about things like maybe make some changes like i don't know support do something like don't just talk about it and be like oh this is really sad it's like okay be the, i mean it's so cheesy but it's like be the change you want to see you know yeah, and don't think this is something that just recently happened. This is centuries old crime. Centuries I mean, old. Um, you know, the old warriors used to have uh, shield boys, but the shield boys, when they went to war with them, they were basically their sex toys to relieve the, to relieve the soldiers. And um, that it, I mean, this is old, 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 old crimes. I mean, and the only way we can do anything about it is to not look blindly at it and actually do something about it. Like to donate to the one eight hundred number. I said. You know, find organizations out there that actually try and do something and, you know, and be a support of it. Be a support of it. And just like, I don't know, see something, say something. You're not saying like you're going to see someone like all of a sudden. But like, the, I mean, trafficking also happens through slow, meticulous grooming of ch- of children. Like it happens in a lot of different ways. It's not just these snatch and grab jobs that people think it is. 
I mean, I don't know. I, f- I, I don't know. I don't know. What was the movie? Uh, I Know My Name is David? I with, think so. With the little boy that like he gets kidnapped and uh, they're all looking for him. And the one lady keeps on calling saying, I know where he is. I know where he is. But they call her crazy. They think she's crazy. She's always complaining about something. But in fact, reality, she, she knew. really knew that that's where the boy was. But they, no one ever paid attention. So finally, the detective's like, you know what? I'm going to check it out because I have no leads. And the little boy was there. I mean, so don't, don't, if you're out there, don't overlook anything. Don't think it's something you shouldn't say because you never know. Yeah, I mean, let's just talk about the incompetency of the police force. I mean, there's a full stop example right there. You're just going to ignore a lead because a woman's crazy. Let's look at in the movie, Homeland Security just abandoning a an agent because it was too expensive. Like, these people in power claim that they care about us, but they don't. Yeah, and at the very beginning, uh, his partner says, you know, he's all proud. He's like, I caught another pedophile. And he's like, but how many children have you saved? And he's yeah. like none he's like you've you've caught 150 pedophiles but not one child is free and then that's what makes him start thinking he's like well wait he's right you know yeah then but also it's like crazy like you've never fucking thought of it that way yeah that is kind of insane i mean especially with all the evidence you deal with on a daily basis like you have to go through these photos and uh, and footage and like and you don't think hey you know what maybe i should save this child i mean and it's like also this is fucking homeland security you're gonna tell me you don't have the best equipment to counter i don't know technology the shit out of it and figure it out i've seen 24 back in 2004 they could figure shit out from a satellite image you're telling me you get hours of footage and you don't know where they are you don't know who these people are useless what are you doing yeah it does it does not put uh the homeland security in a very good light with this but at the same time it does because it's like look at this great guy and now he's in front of congress talking and like he's supposed saving all these children it's like they the government abandoned him yeah i was gonna say he had he did what he did because he his wife and him took it upon themselves to do it i mean he didn't have the support of the government he went and said you know what i'm going to do this because it's the right damn thing to do yeah and then the government was like okay well it's too expensive so we're pulling out jesus it's like it's like okay money does rule everything in the world and like we see that because it's like how did these people get into child trafficking probably for money probably probably victims probably cycles of abuse like i can't probably just evil people too like you can't tell and i I would love to see more of i in this film if they i know that's not the point of the film but like you could actually to have a well-rounded film show some other aspects of it i mean very different style film um, for anyone who's ever seen the movie um, Sallow. It really remind. There's a lot of parts that reminded me of that. Would I recommend Sallow? Um, and check it out if you want. But there, similar to Miss Cartagena, there are um, four women in Sallow who really remind me of her. But they remind me of her, and they actually have a backstory of cycles of abuse, so you understand the position that they're in and why they're doing what they do. This woman, you don't understand what she does. You don't understand why any of them do what they do. It's like you're dealing with these heinous crimes and you're not having fully fledged out characters. Even our protagonists aren't fully fledged out. You try to you try to make one fully fledged out and you just make them a pedophile and a rapist. And it's like and a cokehead. And it's like nothing against cokeheads. But like I everything else is awful. Yeah, and I was always confused at the fact that, like, they don't mention the fact that, did the father try and find his children? I mean, they don't get into that. Yeah, they don't get into that. So, like, your kid's gone for three months. Like, we don't see you searching for them at all. We see you banging on a door one time and then showing up in America when your son's been. Like, obviously, that's what you're going to do. But, like, like where, like, the poli- like the detective that he worked with in Cartagena should have, like, known the dad, should have known the case, should have known the kids. Like, it's like, what's going on here? Or, or is this happening so often, which is horrifying, that they're just blowing everything under the rug and, like, no one gives a shit. I don't know. Like, the story had a lot of holes in it. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Like I said, it the, the story plot is something that should be addressed. The film itself wasn't that great, but if it brings to light the situation, then, then kudos. I mean, good job, because that's what needs to be done. But, um, Go if you watch this movie, you got to go into it and go. All right, I know this movie isn't done well, but let me try and get something out of it that can be positive to help children. Yeah, or like if you watch this movie, I don't know, just like watch it objectively, like do some research. Know that this isn't full stop. This isn't like a. This isn't. This isn't. I don't know. This isn't true. 
it's true, but it's not. It's true, but it's sensationalized. Like, do some real research into it. Do some real looking into it. And um, I don't, I don't know. It's it's definitely a movie. It's definitely a movie. Yeah, and um, I have nothing else to give on this. I, I like I said, I, I was recommended by Frank, and I watched it, and I thought, you know, you know what? I was like, we should touch on it because, like I said, it does go into a subject that is very like under the rug. No one talks about like shadowed. And uh, should be brought to light. Yeah, I mean, but also maybe watch like any episode of Law and Order SVU, and it would be better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that new one? Found. Found. Okay, so let's talk about Found because I watched the first like two episodes of it. Maybe I didn't give it enough of a shot, but insane. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of um, the one with the guy with the father. Uh, his father's a psycho killer, and he's a cop, and he's trying to. Oh uh, yeah. Prodigal son. Prodigal son. It's yeah, like because it, she has. Um, the guy stuck in the cellar. Yeah, she kidnapped him. Yeah, the, her ex uh, Kidnap. kidnapper. So she kidnapped the kidnap. It, it, all this reminds me so much of Stockholm Syndrome. It's just insane. But um, yeah, so she has him in the cellar. Uh, Mark Paul Gosselaar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and from Saved by the Bell. Yeah, so Zach Morris is the original kidnapper. Is uh, he a good actor though? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he's Saved by the Bell. But uh, he he <laughs> yeah he needs to be Saved by the Bell. Um, yeah, but, like, found, prodigal son, like, all these stories, it's, like, I don't know, like, the criminal mind is interesting, but how much leniency are we getting? Not everyone's Hannibal Lecter. This isn't always Silence of the Lambs. Like, this isn't always Mindhunter. Like, there's got to be some lines. Yeah, and the first pedophile they catch is just dumb as a box of rocks. I mean, so, like, he's, like, talking to this, like, FBI detective, and he's, like, oh, one of us? And I'm, like, I'm like, okay, you can't be this stupid. But then he was. He was. But then he was. And I thought it was so funny, too, like, how stupid the pedophile in this movie was, like, right in the beginning, when he was like, but, but, shut up. Shut up. Also, I think it's very funny how films will still per- portray a pedophile as, like, this, like, greasy, glasses-wearing Ne'er do well, kind of like creepy guy, and it's like a stereotype. Stereotype, and it's like a pedophile could literally be anybody, and that's the problem. Like you're just looking for this one type of person, where it could literally be anyone. The movie May December, we have not covered it yet, but May December has just come out on Netflix, or a while back it come out came out on Netflix. Deals with a very similar story about, um, based on another true story about how a woman groomed a 13 year old, and then they got married, and then they had kids. Yeah, and in, in the movie, Miguel is called Teddy Bear by a woman pedophile, like that she yeah. was left for her. So so it does hit on that a tiny smidgen. A baby bit, though, but anyone can, like, this is the thing. The movie is such is such a stereotypical film that felt like no real research was gone into. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it was just like they looked at this guy's story and they were like, well, give us a little bit of information about it and we'll make a film. It's hot garbage. I'm so sorry. I know we've covered two movies in a row that I have not enjoyed, but that's how can't I like feel. Them all. Can't, can't like, like them can't all. Like them all. And we're honest on this podcast. So. We are honest. Obviously, I didn't give the spoiler review because I don't think anyone was going to watch it. So obviously, this was riddled with spoilers. <laughs> on a positive note, me and Kara and uh, Patrick are celebrating 5,000 downloads. That's yes. Great. We got 5,000. So thank you all across the world for listening to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, grow the what's happening um, family. We could never do it without you. Write in, tell us what you think, tell us your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Um, if you just want to fight with me about the opinions, uh, my opinions of this film, guess what? I actually don't care. If you want to have an actual conversation about trafficking, about um, systems of oppression, things like that, I do want to hear, but if you just want to go into the comments and fight about how I didn't understand the film because I don't agree with its right-wing QAnon agenda, keep it to yourself. So I'm going to end this with saying again, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's Cyber Tip Line is 1-800-843-5678. Thank you for that, Ben. Do your part. Do what you can. Our hearts go out to every child that's ever been hurt or any victim of abuse. Um, it's it's an unfortunate, awful thing to have ha- had happen. And I'm sorry that we're still we're, we've found no no way to remedy it in any way because the horrors and evils of man are greater than the good some days. Sorry, this is so bleak. Um, <laughs> truth hurts. The truth does hurt. But maybe we'll pick a happier movie next time. So catch us on what's happening. <laughs> <laughs>